The UK government has estimated that some £400 billion of investment will be needed in infrastructure if the country is to retain its competitiveness by 2020. With me to discuss how retail investors can make money from this trend is Joseph Titmus, Portfolio Manager in the Global Listed Infrastructure Team at AMP Capital. Thank you for joining me, Joseph. Thank you. So let's talk about demands. Infrastructure investing has seen a huge amount of money pouring in in the last six months or so. Why is it becoming so popular now? We believe that over the last few years, investors have been increasingly recognising the benefits of infrastructure as an, as, as an asset class. Infrastructure is quite a unique asset class. It shares some investment characteristics with both bonds and equities. It pays out high dividend yields backed by sustainable uh, cash flows that often increase at or above inflation. And they benefit from long uh, asset lives. Um, investment uh, in infrastructure has also benefited from uh, the demand from um, governments um, to try and stimulate uh, their economies. And it's also been in something of a sweet spot with uh, the global macroeconomic trends of late, quite low bond yields and some uncertainty or volatility in uh, global equity markets. Interesting. If a retail investor is watching and they think, I'd like to invest in infrastructure, how can they go about doing it? What are the channels through which they would need to invest? Probably the most popular uh, method that we've uh, recognised uh, of late has been through global listed uh, infrastructure funds. Um, alternatively, people have also been using ETFs uh, to get exposure or investing directly in an infrastructure company listed on one of the stock exchanges. But by far, you know, the most popular that we've seen are the global listed infrastructure funds that uh, put together a, a globally diversified portfolio of infrastructure companies benefiting from those trends in the growth in the asset class. Okay. And how does infrastructure investments differ? How are they distinguished from, say, a traditional equity or debt investment? In, in, in a couple of ways. So, like I said, they do share some, uh, some uh, characteristics with, uh, with both of those uh, asset classes but also they're, they're quite lowly correlated, so they bring good diversification benefits to um, an investor's uh, portfolio. It does share the, the high yields that uh, you'd associate normally with fixed income, but it also has some growth, which, uh, which you'd probably be more familiar with from, uh, from, from equities. Probably not to the same extent, but you'd probably see lower peaks and, and lower troughs. More stability is what we'd expect over the long term from global listed infrastructure. And how do you see the market evolving over the next uh, six to 12 months? Uh, over the next six to 12 months, there's uh, undoubtedly going to be some, some sort of further uh, volatility or, or uncertainty. You know, the, the world's in, a, in an interesting uh, place, place at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's natural for, uh, for listed uh, investments. Um, we believe that investing in uh, global listed infrastructure is for the long term. These are, these are, these are long term assets. And over the long term, we expect good returns uh, from, uh, from, the, from the asset class and probably to reflect you know, quite, uh, quite stable and low, low correlations to uh, global equities. When you say long term, how long would that be roughly? We're talking 10 years, 20 years? Longer even. So some assets uh, have, asset, have uh, concessions that go beyond uh, 20, 30, 40 years, even up to, a, even up to 100 years. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, other assets that are, that are owned by companies are constantly being renewed. Um, these are uh, assets that provide essential services to the economy and are going to be needed for, for, for some time. What about geographical trends? Can you tell me a little bit about some differences in infrastructure investing across the globe? Sure. There's three main trends that are, that's driving investment in infrastructure around the world today. In developed uh, market economies, we're seeing a lot of investment in infrastructure in order to try and stimulate the economy by, by creating jobs. Um, also, uh, the infrastructure is in quite a dilapidated state. Um, so we're seeing uh, investment renewal, um, a lot of maintenance cap uh, capital expenditure in order to bring those uh, infrastructure assets back up to a reliable state. Whereas in the emerging market economies, there's a lot of investment there to try and close the gap in standard of living between there and, and the developed world. A lot of growth as well, just from the, uh, just from the demographics uh, there in, uh, in, the, in those uh, parts of the world. In terms of specific regions, in Europe, you know, it's very much the case that infrastructure is being used as a tool to try and stimulate uh, the economy. Um, whereas in North America, uh, investment there is really being focused towards the, uh, the energy industry and the, and the shale gas boom that you know, we, we're hearing so, so much about. 
Australia as well. To an extent, there's some investment in infrastructure there related to the, to the, to the resources boom um, that, that they've been, uh, been benefiting from. And what about Latin America? Are you seeing much infrastructure investing going on there? Certainly, yep. All of those countries are seeing, uh, seeing a lot of, uh, lot of investment, in, in particular in Mexico, where we're, we're quite positive on the, uh, on the prospects there. The new government is particularly uh, reform-minded and is uh, uh, very keen to stimulate growth uh, from infrastructure, and uh, the economy there has been growing uh, quite well. Brazil too has been investing in infrastructure quite significantly in recent years. They've got a couple of big events coming up with the Soccer World Football World Cup next year and, uh, and the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro uh, shortly uh, thereafter. And Chile, of course, Chile is quite, quite an interesting economy. They've been benefiting from the resources boom to an extent uh, as well. And their economy has been performing very well and has needed further investment in infrastructure to sustain that. So what, lev what level of total return could an investor expect on an infrastructure investment and how does that compare to, say, fixed income or equities? From global listed infrastructure funds, much like our own, we're expecting returns uh, in the range of sort of high single digits, low, low double digits um, uh, over, over the long term. And that's been pretty indicative of what we've seen over the last uh, 10 years or so, where we, where we saw returns. Um, around 14%, 14 to 15% uh, levels. Of that return, you get a dividend yield of, of around sort of three, three to four percent, and the rest is coming from uh, the capital appreciation. So, you know, quite attractive returns when compared to uh, global bonds or to global equities. And so which companies are you currently bullish on at the moment? Companies we're bullish on are companies that benefit from sound regulation or have an interesting growth dynamic. For example, in Europe, we quite like the European airports. Everybody's heard about the, uh, the economic challenges which uh, Europe has, but airports benefit from global uh, macroeconomic trends and there's been a fair amount of growth in, uh, in emerging markets uh, in, in recent years and a lot of people travelling in those markets to Europe and they're travelling through the major airports like Frankfurt or Paris. We quite like, uh, we quite like both of those uh, companies. In the UK, we like companies here that are benefiting from sound regulation. Two companies that, for example, are National Grid, uh, a large gas and electricity utility, uh, or Seven Trent on the, on the water side. Um, the UK has very sound regulation, political and tax and legal structures, um, which we quite like uh, for our investments. In North America, we mentioned the, the shale gas trend, and, and we like companies that are exposed to that, companies that are owning uh, gas and oil pipelines, like Kinder Morgan or Sempergrid. And what companies are you currently less, less optimistic on? We're less optimistic on, uh, on companies where there's uh, um, more uh, regulatory risk um, than, than, what, than what we'd like, or companies that are looking uh, expensive. So they're pricing in uh, more growth uh, than we'd normally expect. So for example, uh, emerging markets, um, we've seen a, a number of companies there, um, share prices uh, appreciate uh, above what we'd uh, expect. Um, and uh, in uh, southern Europe, there's uh, companies there that are exposed to more regulatory risk than we'd uh, normally be comfortable with. And a large part of what we do is assessing that risk um, and making sure that our uh, portfolio is not, is not unduly exposed to, uh, to, to risks that we'd um, prefer to avoid. What are the risks for retail investors if they're looking to invest in infrastructure? What do they need to be careful of? We think retail investors should be careful about uh, their uh, getting what they expect uh, from their investment. Infrastructure can be broad, quite a broad term. It can be quite a broad uh, asset class depending on the, the definition. We take quite a core and pure uh, definition to uh, infrastructure. We only like investing in infrastructure companies that own and operate uh, the assets. We don't want to take uh, undue risk, undue uh, competition or commodity risk that you might get from investing in a company that you think is infrastructure but really is as more construction uh, risk or has more commodity risk, uh, oil price risk, uh, for, for example. So we're very much focused on uh, the more defensive uh, owners and operators uh, of uh, infrastructure assets. So I think investors should really be careful about uh, what they're investing in and making sure that, uh, that what they are investing in meets their expectations. Thank you very much. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode of Digital Look TV. Joseph Titmus, Portfolio Manager at AMP Capital, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching.